I have vague memories and I don't like to remember it because it's me like neither. Don't blackout either. times oh, yeah. and I get oh. Mm-hmm. It was it was mm-hmm. a good we had a good talk. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what time it was, but I think I phoned my sister and upset. I don't know what time. Mm-hmm. Here we go. The butterfly kiss. <coughs> memories of childhood from the hospital bed. A short story by Brian Waters. I was six years old. And I was in a little room in hospital. Just me and a kid and a cot with bars. This kid disgusted me. It was not his fault that the nurses were too busy and the hospital was overcrowded. This was in 1947-1948. And so soon after the war, what with staff shortages and so on, that this kid's nappy was not changed frequently. And the problem was, he was always covered in his own mess. He ate it, he played with it, and he handled it. It was horrible, it was. And to top it all, he cried all the time. Actually, now, as a grown man, I feel ashamed for the indifference shown to this poor little kid. Perhaps it was because he was too young to talk, and he cried perpetually. I did not understand myself why at the time so I smacked him to try and make him stop crying he naturally did not stop or anything poor little mites I was not in that room for long only until the hospital found a place for me in the men's ward a long room with about 40 beds in two rows opposite each other I was not allowed to move so I lay on my back and watched the world in a very distorted way. There was this special nurse. Oh, she was so young, I wish I could remember her name. She was plump and pink and blonde. To me, she was the most beautiful girl in my world. She used to cuddle me up close and squash me against the bosom. It was a wonderful feeling. Her breasts were big and wobbly, as if she had a pair of live little kittens down a penny for her. She smelt like a summer day. And her smile would melt my insides. I waited for her every day. And the day she wasn't there was miserable for me. When she was there, she would always be so kind to me. She would walk to talk to me and rub my legs, which was always hurting. As if I was particularly lonesome or felt really bad, she would sense it and reward me for being a brave little boy and not crying. Her reward, her reward was a butterfly kiss. She put her face against my neck or back or chest and flutter her eyelashes against my bare skin. I cannot describe the feeling, only that to me as a six-year-old, It felt like an angel was breathing love on me. Then there was old Mr. Church or something. He gave me my first taste of French mustard. He put it on a ham sandwich for me. I remember that taste. Wonderful it was. So special to me. Sharp, a little spicy. Not like normal mustard, which was hot. No, this French stuff, this French mustard was even a bit sweet. It was different. There was also this airman who would walk with the aid of a pair of crutches. I remember he would come whizzing down the wall with a kind of hopping, skipping motion, quite fast. He slipped one day, and as he went cannoning down the wall with his crutches, every which way he caught a bedpan and a bottle of pee-pee, a mighty wallop, and sent this awful mess sliding and swishing all over the, all over the place. Mate was livid and got the right up to him. She took away his crutches and shoved him into a wheelchair. I remember he used to sit in his wheelchair next to my bed and draw aeroplanes for me. I suppose that's how I got to get interested in aeroplanes. When I was much later out of hospital, I started aeromodelling and built, among others, a Spitfire and a Gypsy Moth, and in all, perhaps a hundred or so models, which were popular at the time. Airman in the chair wasn't there long. He went off back to wherever and his leg was better. All I can remember was I was the only kid in the ward and most of the men in it was old. I did not see much of my parents and family, so really, even though I missed them, 
it was as if my home was this hospital ward and old Mr. Church, or whatever his name was, was my family. He used to be in bed right at the end of the ward. I was in the bed by the door at the other end of the ward. Those days in hospital never ended. I would wake up in the morning, always around five, and there would be an empty bed opposite mine, and usually I had been the last person to talk to them. I don't really remember them, only old Mr. Church. When they moved him up to the door, I had a feeling that he wouldn't be there in the morning. He gave me the jar with the rest of the French mustard. I don't remember if I cried. Probably not. I was so in my own misery, I daydreamed of going away from that place. Mornings went into afternoons and days into nights and on and on forever. I was not allowed to move and I had to lay on my back. There was a kind of tent over me so the bedclothes would not touch my body. The doctors came every day and gave me injections, four a day, in my arms. I never cried. Instead I got angry. I was so mad. I was mad as hell. All I could do was talk to the ceiling and shout when the pain in my bones became too much. The nurses came and told me to be quiet and still. Only butterfly nurse held me and comforted me on the days off. On the days or nights off, I missed them more than my own mother. She told me she was going to get married and I cried. I cried forever and I never saw her again. End. Like, I wanted to send that to the Reader's Digest to see a little short story, but I never did. I wonder if they'd publish that or not. Hmm? Anyone you think would like to see that? That's beautiful. Can you write the time? What time? When, oh, you have the date on there. When, when did you write that? Oh. 20 years ago, <laughs> probably. I don't know. I'll write this down. Uh, and this has got to be like... Uh, well, yeah, this has got to be around about the time I was getting the hours going through it. Nearly committed suicide, man. I mean, I had fucking horrible experiences. How I didn't do it, I don't fucking know, but honest to you. How, what, what, what year was this? 1986. What was going on at that time? Getting divorced, getting separation papers and everything. And I come back to. Oh, and I was still living in the old house. <coughs> you want to take that copy? Can I? I've got another copy, so don't lose that. Though. I've only got one more copy. No, is... And then I was, uh, I was, um, no, that was fucking scary, man. Oof, that is such a vivid fucking memory. And uh, actually, that's one of the nightmares I get occasionally. I'm going to get a, just the basis of it, not to go all the ins and outs. Decided. Uh, and I was high on fucking drugs, prescription drugs, and alcohol, and driving my car on the other side of the fjord, along this fucking 